What's up, guys? It's Dan. I wanted to do a video as um, one of you had commented that I should do a video on helping how to aim with the torpedoes in a submarine. And uh, I thought, well, why the hell didn't I think of that yesterday when I was making these? So I figured I'd do a quick follow up and um, kind of go through some basics when it, it comes to aiming and where to aim and how to aim. And I'm not going to show you real gameplay because. One, it would take a long time to get gameplay that would be worthwhile, and two, I don't have any editing software, so I can't skip anything, so you'd be stuck with a long, boring video. So, here's what we're going to talk about first. So, in general, as we look at torpedoes, so um, I just took the Tier 3 American Type S, but um, if we look at their top researchable torp, um, we'll look here, and a couple things you want to pay attention to, and that's the firing speed. Uh, you definitely want to look at safe range, which is pretty similar across the board, and then the torpedo speed. So you'll see as you level up, the torpedoes are going to go faster, which is going to be better, but in the first few tiers, it's really frustrating because your torpedoes are pretty slow, and they're pretty hard to hit anything, and everything seems to outmaneuver them. So uh, the first part of this that we'll go into is the safe range. So if you're close enough, you guys have probably experienced this, or if you're too close to another sub, another ship, whatever you're trying to hit, um, your torpedoes have to arm themselves in order to go off. That way they don't damage your own sub with the explosion. So you'd never want to aim, uh, you know, even though the safe range is throwing 300 meters, I would double that and say under 600 meters you may be wasting a torpedo. It might be better off for you to circle back and uh, try and make a better shot. But for now, what I'd say is focus on when we talk about distance of torpedoes. This torpedo's range, uh, you can see the max range is 2,700 meters. You are, or even 3,200 meters within that range there, you're, there's no way in hell you're going to hit anything from that far out. Something's going to move. Now, what you can do is just, if you happen to be passing through, um, you know, a channel... You could throw some torpedoes, but odds are the farther away you are, the more likely some dumbass is going to swim in front of your uh, torpedoes with their ship and then MF you and say how stupid you are when in reality you may have taken a pretty good shot, but it was so far out that it didn't do anything. So I would tell you if you're going to drop torpedoes, you need to be between 600 and 1,000 meters to truly be effective. Now, if you're outnumbering the enemy, you can take shots farther out than that because your own teammates are going to be pushing them in one direction or another, and it gives you an idea on lead time. Um, but as you're leveling up your ships, you can see the difference in torpedo speed. Um, this one here, not much, but as you go up tiers, and let's say we look at a tier 5, you take a look here, and what you'll find is these torpedoes, are beginning to get almost in the 70s some of them get slower some of them get faster what you need to do is take a look at them and know how your adjustments are going to need to be made um, the torpedo speed is really important to your results as far as your aim goes so let's talk a little bit about where to aim so we already talked about you want to be between 600 and a thousand meters ideally that's when you're going to get a good shot so that means we want to focus on things that are big and slow these are big and deceivingly fast. So if you're going after a carrier, same thing. That range really applies. You're going to take shots, and you're going to be like, holy fuck, that thing's big. It should be slow. Well, it's not really. It's going to probably be able to dodge it if you're shooting broadside. On these, you really want to shoot, um, try and shoot head on or on an angle because they don't turn as well. But if you shoot broadside, they're probably going to be able to... to um, Unless you're within that ideal range, they're probably going to be able to, to avoid it. And you're going to be like, holy shit, that thing's big. How did it do that? Um, it happens all the time. So let's talk about battleships, which probably is going to be your main target. They're pretty slow. Some of them are, are again, deceivingly fast. But let's say you're that 600 to 1,200 meter range, 600 to 1,500 meter range, and this thing's sitting still like they do sometimes. So if it's sitting still, my advice would be to put one right down the middle and make it make a decision. I think that's really the best idea I can give you guys. Put one right in the middle and make it go one way or another to dodge it. As you see it lead, it's probably going to go the fastest speed it can go. 
So you're going to want to segment out probably another round here and then another round, you know, almost off an angle over and through here. But really you want to make a commit to one direction or another. Now, with with battleships, you may be able to sneak up on these to the point where you're within a thousand meters. Send two or three rounds at once. If you're under a thousand, it's probably not going to be able to get up to speed if it's dead stopped. If it's moving one direction or another, you're going to need to lead it a little bit. Um, I almost never take a shot directly at something outside of the battleship because if something's moving, it's going to have a good chance that it's going to be able to to avoid it either way. Um, now, when it comes to uh, like your carriers, same thing. If it's dead stopped, which a lot of them are, make it commit and then lead them out in the front a pretty significant distance. Um, you, you're not really going to want to aim at the front, so to speak, because like I said, it's deceivingly fast. So if you put one right down the middle and he moves this direction to this side, I wouldn't aim at the front here. You want to aim off of it. You want to figure that it, at the very least, if he starts to move and he goes top speed, you can aim a full length in front. I see a lot of people aim here or a lot of people aim here. This thing's going to get up to speed so quickly, you probably want to aim almost double the length in order to get another hit because that's your that's the space you have to screw up um, so it the next thing we want to look at is let's look at a sub so we talked a little bit about the sub in um, in the first video as the sub submerges you guys are gonna see it's gonna have a shadow here and probably a shadow that starts around here so if you were to aim at the back half you're gonna miss even though there's metal here according to the shadow you want to stick to the top of the shadow I find I have the best results when I'm aiming at a submarine when I'm on this angle here when I have it head on and I'm putting you know around right in the middle and again make it commit and then you're gonna put probably around right through here because these are very slow once you make it commit to a direction and you're within that range six even eighteen hundred meters on a sub isn't bad um, you can probably get a hit there, but if you're within 1,200 meters, you're probably going to hit it. Um, but again, put one round directly at it, make it commit to a direction. After it commits, you want to lead probably here. Again, figure almost a full body length is, is your margin of error. So if it turns to its whole body length, you got quite a bit to work with with certain subs. Um, now the U-boats and the Type 2s, you don't have a lot of room to work with, but on a Japanese sub, you'll have even more. But aim straight down the middle. And as soon as he turns one way or another, that's when you're going to lead that round. Um, probably anywhere between, I, I don't know, it's hard to, hard to give an estimate on this, but I would say right in through here, almost a full body length. That way you can almost be assured to get another one. Now that's where your firing speed comes into play. If your tubes are not going to be almost an instant reload, then you want to factor that in as well. Um, as we look at light cruisers and you look at destroyers, just, <laughs> I hate to say this, but really you don't want to waste your time unless you're under a thousand meters messing with these guys. And it's the same thing. You want to try and take these on headlong, one, because they can't hit you with torpedoes. If you try and go after this thing and you're heading at it headlong, their torpedoes are coming from the sides, you're not going to have a good day. They're going to make it difficult at the least for you to aim. More than likely, you're probably going to take one in the chin. So my opinion is you want to have them on an angle similar to this or this, and you really want to try to aim left or right, again, depending on the angle, and get them to slow down. Um is really top priority. If they can slow down and they have to speed back up again, it's going to be your only chance to hit them. But battleships, cruisers, even the heavy cruisers, you really want to stay away from them. So if we were to look at overall, let's say this is a map of the screen, and back here is where they spawn on the map, you really want to try and get out and around. I see so many people go right down the middle. Go out and around. Even if you're not going to get a lot of action, it's going to make your life easier because typically the battleships are back here and then you'd have your aircraft carriers back here. But if you're going right down the middle, no way. And if you go down a side and you're alone, you might as well forget about it because you'll probably run into some um, destroyers and it's just going to be rough for you. The longer you can hold out on firing is the better it's going to be for you. So that would be my advice. Hold out on firing as long as you can. 
I would also bring some smoke. You'll see on some of my higher tier ships, I bring the smoke bombs, which help a little bit. It allows you to get some of your oxygen back or not dive and maintain your oxygen as long as possible. So that's a couple tips. That's what I've found effective. To some point, you just have to play and you really just have to learn your ship itself and, and you know how you're going to play it. But a couple tips are make sure that you equip the commanders that are going to give you torpedo speed. I find that's made a pretty big difference, even though it's only a few percentage points. Um, here's a couple of them. Uh, these guys have definitely helped, I think, me get close, you know, uh, be able to close some distance that typically people were dodging, but the faster they go, the less time they have to react and the less time they have to dodge. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, I mean, I, I, you guys can tell I'm only like tier 5. I can tell you, if I'm playing 3 to 4 hours a day, which I don't always, but if I do do that, I finish in the top 1,000, the top 750 in kills with the submarine. Um, and really, I, I average probably three to four kills a game in a good game if I'm going to get MVP and about 2,000 to 4,000 damage depending on the tier I'm playing. So I'm not you know, a superstar by any means, but I think those things have been the, the biggest learnings I've taken away from the aiming is remember their whole body is your margin of error. You don't have to hit any specific spot, so consider full body lengths when making the next aiming point, um, especially on the slower, slower ships. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. Uh, hopefully I'll have a new mic the next time I talk to you. See ya.